Hello everybody, John Abella. You can find me online at hikelighter.com and on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash hikelighter. Here on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash hikelighter. Over the last few months, a number of videos I've put out and pictures on my Facebook site and Instagram. By the way, you can find me on Instagram at instagram.com forward slash John Abella. I have talked about a type of fuel that I use, which is called Swiss Fire Gel. And I want to start off by saying the first person that I saw use this was John from Flat Cat Gear. He did a video on this, I don't know, last year, maybe two years ago, in a series in which he was presenting the safety aspects of different type of fuel. And I want to talk about that here today as a lead-in to why it is that I have switched to using Swiss Fire Gel instead of the all-popular Yellow Heat. Now, the vast majority of the time, I hike as a no-cook hider, a no-cook hiker. However, I do usually carry a small uh, cup, stove, and a small amount of fuel with me uh, so that I can have some hot tea, coffee, or, you know, a rare hot cup of oatmeal in the morning or something like that. So uh, tonight I'm going to uh, be boiling up some water and I'm going to be having this. This is uh, kind of become my favorite drink out on the trail and at home. And when I'm not, when I do want some coffee, I just uh, break out some, some uh, Via Instant House Blend. I kind of like the House Blend. You know, um, I switch back and forth between Via and real coffee. But I uh, hear lately it's just been some via. But uh, really, the, the this is what my, I prefer these days. So we're going to make this up during the whole process of all of this. So the particular stove I've been using is called the Multi Fuel Stove, and you can buy this from FlatCatGear.com. He originally designed this to be an ISO stove for isopropanol isopropyl alcohol. Yeah, that stuff. Uh, the stuff in a brown bottle or white bottle that you usually have in your 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 uh, your, your bathroom. Um, however, it's been discovered that this also works rather well with Swiss Fire Gel. So it is what I use. So to give you an idea and to get this thing working while I'm talking about everything else. We're just going to uh, push it back here kind of out of the way. So let me start off by showing you what this stuff is. It is a gel, not a liquid. Um, and that, that is a classification difference. A heat, for instance, is considered a, a you know, a, a liquid, whereas this is a gel. And let me pour a little bit here on the side so you can see what it looks like. As you can see, it is a very slow moving um, fuel source. And that's really what makes this the unique thing that it is. The fact that it is so, um, sl it, it, it doesn't spill all over the place. Wasn't really paying attention there. I'm not sure if that's going to be enough, but we'll see. And it lights up easily. Going to let the stove get warmed up a little bit. You don't need to, but why not? All right, we're just going to tuck that out of the way. Now, John from Flat Cat Gear also thinks that um, 
a hand sanitizer, like this stuff, Purell, which every hiker should have at least two or three bottles of this uh, in their pack at any given time. One, you know, usually one in a, in a shoulder pouch or or um, hip belt pockets that you can pull out really quick and just, you know, wash, you know, scrub your hands four, five, six, ten times a day. The more, the better, especially for long distance hikers. Um, so yeah, I, I usually, I always carry one of these in a hip pocket. And if, if I got a hip pocket and then one in a shoulder pouch, if I have a shoulder pouch. So, uh, this is almost identical to Swiss fire gel. However, I find Swiss fire gel to burn a little bit hotter and uh, it doesn't take as much fuel to get water hot. Could just be me. I am not saying that that is the case, that that is fact. It just seems to be, uh, hand sanitizer just seems to burn slower and not as hot for me. Now... Let's talk about the differences here. And I'm going to pour some of this right here. And I'm going to light it on fire. This is my stove, so it doesn't matter. As you can see, let me zoom in on that. It is not transferring anywhere. And this, is, this isn't ground, obviously. This is a very slick surface. And it's not really spreading anywhere. And that is really the, the safety aspect of this fuel. You know, California right now, which is, I live in the state of California. California is having brutal fires. You know, there was a, um, a fire down right where the PCT crosses Cajon Pass a year ago where uh, the fire actually got up onto the freeway and caused some semi-trucks and other cars to catch on fire. You might have seen that on the news. Pretty dang scary. Um, let me blow this out just to show you how quickly this blows out. That blew out, and I, uh, I was about 12 inches away from it. Grab a towel, and it cleaned right up. One swipe. So you just saw what happens to heat when it catches on fire. Now, I'm going to, I'm sorry, to Swiss fire gel. Now, I'm going to do the same thing with heat. And this time, I have my fire extinguisher ready because I don't know if I'm going to be able to control this. Uh, that is the problem with heat. All right, so that's already spreading. You can't see it, but trust me, it's spreading. And there you go. You can actually see as it's catching on fire, it's pushing itself along. Uh, it's starting to burn itself out, but it pushed itself along. And that is a number one safety issue with heat. So yeah, that's the real problem with heat. You know, a lot of people like using cat can stoves, whether it's, you know, some do-it-yourself do homemade jobs like these or probably the, 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 the master of all um, alcohol stoves, the Mini Bowl Design Elite. Um, one of the more safer stove alcohol stoves, but still not a truly safe alcohol stove, is the Zelf uh, Starlight Stove. And this has had a number of iterations, generations to it. And the most recent generation, he put carbon felt in there. So, um, you know, now you can put some alcohol in there and turn it over. And the alcohol doesn't come out, which is an amazing safety feature. And major kudos to him for that. Um, but it is still possible. I don't know if you just saw. I just spilt a little bit. Now, if I wasn't paying attention, and I happen to have this directly on the ground with, 
you know, some leaves or twigs or whatever, then boom, this probably we can't see it, but there's some flame right here. Uh, that would have just likely caught whatever was there on fire. And then you've got yourself a mini um, forest fire. And if, you know, if it gets out of control, you're not really paying attention. You happen to spill more heat than, you know, than, than what I did, then you've got a problem. Yeah, that's, that's really the, the gist of all of this. I think my water's done. I don't like boiling hot water. Uh, I rarely, rarely make boiling hot water. In my opinion, the only time you need to boil water is if you need to sanitize water. This stuff's really good. Anyway, uh, you saw how much fuel I put in there. It came up to uh, what, what we call um, uh, squid eyes. Probably not going to be able to see that. Yeah, I can't get a, can't get an angle on that. But anyway, that was squid eyes. So again, this is Swiss fire gel. And the reason for using it over heat, as I just explained, was safety factor. And uh, I consider this pretty precious, so I'm not going to use a whole lot of this. But um, there is some of that. Let me put down a tiny bit of this, uh, an equal amount of this. And yeah, I think I used up the last of my, let me see if this is heat or not. Yep, that's heat. Okay, let me put a little bit of heat down. Okay, I'm gonna light all three. I have hand sanitizer, Swiss, and heat. All right, so the heat just burned out. Let me turn the lights off so got, we can actually see this. All right, I just dumped some heat back here. And look at it go. So as you can tell, um, heat is, uh, sorry, um, these gels are a very long burning fuel source, which is also a nice aspect of using them. This isn't me trying to bash the, the alcohol stove industry. That's, that's not what I'm about. It's, it's, it's not what I, it's not what I do. It's not the intent of this, but what this is, is me saying, me trying to do my part to, you know, bring some awareness to some safer fuels and, you know, really it comes down to these two things, the Swiss fire gel and the hand sanitizer with a very good stove such as, um, such as the multi-fuel stove. Now I will say, let me turn the lights back on. A nice thing about the Swiss Fire Gel, let me zoom back out here. A nice thing about the the, uh, the multi-fuel stove is it is a stove and a stand together. Saving you from having to carry an extra uh, wind, uh, an extra stand if you happen to be using something like this, which uh, I've used this quite a bit. You can see by this, uh, by looking at this, you can see what the Swiss Fire Gel does to the bottom of a stove. Uh, you end up with this blue crystallized substance. So one of the things that I do, and this is just an old um, Starbucks espresso can that I cut off.
So as you can see, we got a, a flame there. And then, you know, if you don't want to go the route of buying the multi-fuel stove, you can just pick yourself up a stand or make yourself one out of the little wire and go that route. And it works really well. Um, you know, I like this stove because uh, when I'm out with my my big pot, I have a 900 millimeter uh cook pot that I usually take with me when I'm going out uh, with food you know that's going to be prepared during the winter season it always goes with me uh, and then you know if I'm going with groups if I'm uh, you know involved in any type of uh, assisting media groups and organizations that want to go out into the, the backwoods up here I always take the 900 millimeter stove with me and this is really nice because it is good for that larger pot. Now, uh, you might see some, some uh, other stoves over here. Let me move this out of the way. And yep, that was hot. Forgot to spread the bars. You might see uh, these other stoves over here. All right, I just burned the, the string on that. This is the... Snow Peak Light Max, Max Light. And this is, uh, in this day and age, this is the gold standard of um, canister standalone stoves. And yes, I need to clean mine. This is that new one that's making waves all over the internet, the BRS 3000, something like that. I don't know. It's the stupidest name ever for a stove. Almost out of fuel in that can. And then, of course... The, oh, I don't have this, the can on here, but this is the MSR wind burner, the finest um, all-in-one stove system that you can buy. Turn that sucker off. So, what I wanted to talk about in regards to these is uh, the safety aspect of these as well. I have hundreds of days of use with these type of stoves out on the trail, like thousands and thousands and thousands of other people around the world. I have at times had them tip over. Uh, I think every time except for maybe once, the wind caused the pot to tip over and that caused the stove itself to flip over. You know, you start getting heavy pots with water and that kind of thing. Uh, it happens. It doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. And I'm going to use this little tiny stove just as an example of what I want to talk about. When, this, when these stoves tip over, watch. Holy crap. Hopefully you saw that. So if you have that stove flip over and these things go ballistic like that, you wanting to reach down and pick up that sucker or try to touch that, try to reach in and grab that tiny little handle to turn it off 
extremely scary and extremely dangerous. Uh, there's been many, you know, uh, I think every time that that's happened to me, I ended up grabbing some water out of my one of my water bags, you know, which is precious. Any hiker knows that water's precious. And dousing the entire stove uh, and, you know, whatever it caught on fire on the ground. So, you know, are these the safe, safest stoves out there? I don't want to say yes, but I also don't want to say no because of what I just presented. As I've shown here multiple times, you know, this stuff, this gel, let me just put it into a... You know, uh, uh, a length here, or hey, here's a better idea. Let me let me pour some on here. This is a MSR groundhog steak. And then I'm going to tilt this while it's on fire. Am I in frame? Yeah, I'm in frame. I can do this without burning myself. All right. So as you can see, that Swiss fire gel is barely moving down the length of this steak. Okay, that steak just got really hot. <laughs> so if that were to tip over, whether you know your gel is in here or in your little homemade do-it-yourself thing. If it does fall over, you just saw how slow that that gel is when it is on fire and spreading. Extremely slow. And I'm just going to keep going back to it. That is what makes Swiss Fire Gel, in my opinion, the safest fuel source that a hiker can use. And that is why I use it in, you know, even if it wasn't an aspect of the, the, the fire issues that we have in California, I still think that, as the saying goes, only you can prevent forest fires. And that, this, this video here just really proved that Swiss Fire Gel and hand sanitizer, whichever one you prefer to use, there's... Nothing else that I've done here that comes close to having the safety aspect of Swiss of these. Now, one of the things I haven't talked about, and I know some of you are sitting there going, well, what about, well, what about Esbit? Um, I think that Esbit is equally safe as this Swiss fire gel. And in some regards, I would say it is safer than Swiss fire gel. The Esbit, or I think they call it meths over across the pond, um, it is a little bit more difficult to light. The trick to getting Esbit to light is to take your cube, whether you've got the big 14 gram cubes or the small 4 gram cubes like what I use, and take, take, your, take your cube and with a steak or a knife or whatever you have, just scrape a little bit of it off and then put, it, put your Esbit right next to the part that you scraped off. Kind of like a ferrocium rod. Um, Oh, what's that? Not the ferrocene rod, but the other rod that you use along with those rods. Uh, sorry, the brain's not working. But in the same way, uh, you, you want to scrape off some of that, that Esbit cube and then light the, the granules. And that will get your Esbit started significantly easier. And, you know, the people who always say, Esbit's too hard to light. Well, that's how you solve that problem. Esbit is equally easy to blow out. I would say maybe a tad bit harder to blow out um, than Swiss Fire Gel once it gets going. 
Um, both of them, Swiss Fire Gel and Esbit, are highly susceptible to the to the wind. You pretty much have to have a windscreen for either of those. When it comes to carrying, um, you know, to actually packing, uh, obviously Esbit is is a uh, safer fuel source. You know, the chances of this ever catching on fire are one in how many billion? I don't know. But uh, the chances of Esbit catching on fire are probably one to a bazillion trillion. Um, so... Of the fuel sources out there, yes, uh, Esbit, I would say, is probably the safest fuel source that, that's out there. Um, you know, but I understand a lot of people don't like Esbit because of soot, which just means that you don't have your stand set at the correct height or the smell, um, which, hey, uh, I got no argument against that one. Esbit smells... Uh, it, it smells when you open up the bag. It, it smells in transportation. It can it can it can leach over into your your garments. Um, it can some people can smell it when when you're uh, cooking it. You know when you're when when it's on fire. Um, I, I can't deny that aspect. Whereas Swiss Fire Gel and um, hand sanitizer has no smell. Perceivable smell. I, I you know, um, I asked John once over Flat Cat Gear if there was any smell to it, and he said no as well. So you know, it, it's like heat, and that there is no, um, you know, smell to it. So yeah, I don't want to exclude uh, Esbit in all of this. This topic here wasn't my intent. Um, I, it's just that I consider it so safe of a fuel that honestly I didn't even think about including it in this until the very end here. Um, this was mostly, you know, uh, uh, showing the Swiss fire gel versus heat versus canister fuel stoves. And I've talked on a lot uh, enough here. I apologize to anybody that's still watching this video. Get back to some tea here. Thanks everybody for watching. And you can buy this Swiss fire gel on Amazon. Uh, it, it, it is a tiny bit expensive. I think it's 13, maybe $16 for this. Um, but... Uh, that right there is like two and a half or three of these. So, you know, it goes a crazy long way. It looks like it wouldn't last for a very long time, but, um, you know, so I, I brought, I brought this. This is, um, probably about, uh, what is this? This is a, um, Snow Peak, uh, 400, Snow Peak 300. So, um, call it 280 milliliters of water and I used that much fuel, you know, so I got another three uses out of this. So that's three mornings of hot coffee for this, and that was about this much up, sorry, that was about this much out of the container. So, you know, um, what do I got there? Three, six, nine, you know, uh, let's call that about eight, nine, ten days worth of fuel that I've already taken out of there. Just to give you an idea. So if you figure, you know, um, let's say, let's call it 10. So you've got 20 days or 20, you know, uses from one container. Obviously, that doesn't make it the cheapest option out there. Um, Esbit, I think, is probably the second cheapest with, unfortunately, heat being the cheapest. Um, there's, there's no argument there. I said I was going to shut up. Now I'm going to have my tea. Go upload this video. Everybody have a wonderful day.